I'm encouraged. Even if nobody else watches this, I'm like, oh, man, I'm glad we talked. That felt good. Yeah, we mostly just talk to ourselves and hope someone else um, gets a... Uh... Please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Please. We just want someone to love us. All right. I'm not keeping any of that. <laughs> Here's my full expectation. I'd never hear it again. <laughs> Okie doke. We are talking about a time that I prophesied. The prophet. The prophet. The prophet Benjamin Foote. <laughs> yeah, that is my title on my business cards and my YouTube prophet page. Prophet Benjamin Foote. I really truly think that, and I, I think I said it to this individual. I said, you know, I'm gonna, I've got a prophecy for you. Oh, you, you, I didn't know you opened up like that. Did you? I'll, I'll tell you what I said. This is what I see happening for you. But it wasn't like I wasn't like getting my crystal ball. You know what I mean? Um, but before we get too many Plymouth Brethren turning off the podcast, let me explain what I mean before <laughs> camp starts going. Oh, boy. Who did we allow to be part of our ecosystem? A friend of mine was telling me a story about uh, him being discouraged and and I know and knew uh, of God's promises mm. Mm. and so my my prophetic word so to speak mm -hmm. was this is what God promises you Ooh. and so this is what I know God is promising you in this moment and if that's not prophecy, then I don't really know what is. Then you were like, blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings <laughs> yeah. on blessings. Woo, and at blessings the end of all this, you're going to get a Tesla. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and three Lambos. No, I, I left that part out. But I'll tell you, he's he's been faithfully evangelizing to his, his friend, uh, meeting with them and sharing with them the gospel of the Lord Jesus, trying to get them to a better understanding. Good news. And that's good, right? Good that's news. a good thing. Mm -hmm. And recently this friend of, of his said, hey, uh, I still like hanging out with you, but I wanna take a break. I, I, don't, I don't feel like talking about this anymore. Wow. And he, uh, understandably to any believer, that's, that's a discouraging thing to hear. Yeah. And uh, so he's telling me about this. I feel so discouraged. And like, what's the point of of continuing this relationship if I can't like center it on God? And so my prophecy to him was continue to be faithful in your relationship. Continue to be faithful to God through this relationship. And I promise, and what God promises is that he will be faithful in return and therefore give it a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple years, maybe a generation, but you will look back at this time where you were faithful and you will see God and how he was faithful to you mm -hmm. in this time, even though right now you are feeling discouraged and like things aren't going well for you spiritually. If you remain faithful, he will remain faithful because we serve a faithful God. And then I even said, hey, even if you are faithless at times, mm. the Bible says that he remains faithful because God is faithful. Mm. That is an attribute of God, and God cannot be faithless. Yes. And so God is going to be faithful. Wow. You know, before we move any further, I think it's so good to invite people into what you and I have already spoken with each other at some length about already in the faithfulness of God is that you've got to be familiar with his promises in order to understand yes. what God is being faithful to. But in order to properly forward, prophesy that's too. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Understand you gotta understand his promises. Mm -hmm. Prophecy isn't mm -hmm. I had a dream about this thing happening and I'm gonna just throw out a real extreme example. Mm -hmm. God is telling you that maybe it's a good idea for you not to not to keep this pregnancy, right? Like something like that that's like that's not prophecy because that is not according to God's promises or to God's will. Like something comes um, to your mind like, oh, man, I think God's calling me to get an abortion. Yeah, you get that Holy Spirit butterfly. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's got yeah. it's got to be God. You know what I mean? Yeah, this you know, idea I'm, came to me with a lot of emotion. Yeah. Yes. It felt very yes. clear. It felt so yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. When well, yeah. we don't understand God's uh, promises, who he is, what he said he will do, 
then our prophecy gets real muddled and it gets into sort of Joel territory where um, Joel <laughs> says, be uh, yeah, <laughs> well, but he says, these people say that they speak for me and they don't. That's that's all I'll say. Oh, oh, the prophet Joel. <laughs> I thought you were calling. Okay, I thought you was calling somebody out. Okay. Oh no 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 no. We're gonna go oh, further. We're gonna go okay, further. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. No, this is not the podcast for for bashing. But no, I'm talking about the Book of Joel, the Prophet Joel, two thousand and something years ago. Yes. Who awesome. said they speak for me? God says this through Joel. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that's Jeremiah. Am I being crazy? Is it a J? Yeah, um, Jeremiah says they speak for me. I think that's but, Jeremiah. Yeah, but, but they do whatever. not. We All can right. look it up. We can fact check it later. Yeah. We can look it up. Yeah. But let's yeah, talk the, about prophecy real quick just to give a quick definition. It's real easy. Actually, the apostle Paul gives us a definition in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He talks about actually the gift of prophesying ought to be desired above all other gifts. Verse 3. So drawing a contrast between speaking in tongues and prophesying, he says, but he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort so the one who prophesies speaks words that result in people being built up in the truth of god Mm -hmm. being encouraged to continue right or exhorted right urged and also comforted comforted Why? Yeah. And so you look at the prophets, a lot of times people get so caught up in them talking about future events that are going to take place, which validates that their word comes from God. Yeah. Right? But most of what they're talking about is turn away from sin and 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 walk in righteousness after yeah. the Lord. And yeah. there's so many temptations and things try to distract you from that. And we look at God's dealings with the people of Israel, and we get a pretty clear picture of what God's faithfulness looks like to accomplish his promises to a people an entire people group that rebelled against him, and even yeah. they were off unfaithful. Guess who was faithful? The Lord. We still have our Messiah. We yeah. still have the hope of God's glory and salvation. God's He's faithful. He's showing that off right now, and I'm excited for other people to explore it with us. So we know what prophecy is. You prophesied. You prophesied to encourage this brother about God's yeah. faithfulness. Let's talk about, about his God's faithfulness. faithfulness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. So uh, it also says, uh, if we're looking at 1 Corinthians 14, Mm -hmm. which is a lot where we get the New Testament definition of uh, church order, it says that if one were to prophesy, someone else were to, needs to be able to be there and hold it up and see if it is true. So Carl, Mm -hmm. I just told you what my prophecy was for my friend, Mm -hmm. hold it up and tell me if I'm, if I'm in the wrong or not, or if I'm. That is a, a true word that I gave. Yeah, brother. I mean, Isaiah tells us that perfect peace the Lord will keep. That is that person whose heart, mind, thoughts stays on the Lord. Uh, scripture tells us in Psalm 1 that the person whose meditation is on God's word and his promises, because that's what God's word does. It just, as Jesus said, testifies of the Lord, the one who mm. is our hope. And Psalm 1 tells us the person who makes the God of hope, their focus and his promises and his commandments, that they're actually going to prosper in all that they do. And yeah. uh, there's some passages, even Jeremiah, that talk about that the person who hopes in the Lord uh, will flourish even in the time of drought and famine. They're, they're like a tree that if there was drought in the land, it would still flourish. His leaves would be green. It will bear fruit. It's like, what? So, yeah, God, his word says that he's going to provide he'll never leave us or forsake us there's so many examples of scripture that remind us that that is true all right let's look at hebrews 10 let's look at i there is a there is a promise about god's faithfulness when we start to grasp how faithful god is the Mm. god of the the god of the universe Mm. it gives us utmost confidence and assurance to go out and do the things that he has has uh has for us to do And we'll get a little bit more into the practicalities of when that's not really working out for us. Mm -hmm. But first, here is the basis. We're in Hebrews 10, starting in verse 19. And first of all, Hebrews is a tough book to read Mm -hmm. if you don't understand what book. Mm -hmm. I would say if you don't understand the Old Testament, specifically Deuteronomy. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say Leviticus, but both of those work. Both of those work. So it's tough, uh, I think. Yeah, um, Leviticus, that's what you mean. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, and Leviticus is a, uh, it's, I just read it 
oh, so long <laughs> and hard to read Thank through. you. And, Tell the yeah. truth. Yeah. Tell the truth to the people, Ben. Hey, guys, sort, we struggle too. <laughs> it's sort of the point, though. I think they probably think the, we just read the way we get on here. We just read about... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there are yeah. some times where I get to numbers. Still, numbers and Leviticus, I'm both like, oh, all right, I'm going to have to listen yeah. to this one. You know, First two yeah. chapters of numbers are rough. Yep, it's yep. just a bunch of numbers. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the book of Leviticus is just all these things about the holy priesthood and the Levites and all this kind of stuff. But the, the, the main context of, uh, of Hebrews, at least just for now, it, it, that will scratch the surface, is Jesus came and did everything that had to be done in Leviticus so that now mm -hmm. we can enjoy mm -hmm. what he has for us mm -hmm. instead of having to do just the mountain of things that is laid out by That's the priests right. That's uh, right. in Leviticus. So then it starts, there's the context, it starts in verse 19, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, that's what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Here it is. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. That's right. And so that is the confidence that we have when we have assurance of the faithfulness of God to this dear brother that, that I was speaking to and in, in bringing this up. He is getting to this point uh, in this relationship where he's trying to be faithful in being Jesus to this person and reflecting Jesus like the, like the moon reflects the sun. And this person is saying, you know what? I'm good. And he's getting to this point where he's ah, he's feeling like he's wavering a little bit. The passage in Hebrews is saying, we can hold fast to the hope that we have in Christ without wavering because he who promised is faithful. Yes. God's faithfulness yes. trumps yes. our wavering. So the next thing would be, would beg, because really the end of this our passage is God talking about how he's going to do the work. The reason we should not waver is because God's never wavered in faithfulness, right? Yeah. Like it makes sense if like... For instance, people be nervous to drive Chryslers at a certain time, or even at a certain time, Cadillacs, because they had a reputation for failing. Makes sense if you're nervous there. Makes sense if you're like, mm, I don't know if I want to use this car today. I'm, I think I'm going to actually try, I'm going to walk. I'll use the bus instead. Um, that's wavering, because you don't have trust in that product or whatever that's supposed to be providing a service you depend on. God is not like any of those things. In fact, yeah. he is the source of all power. He's the... He's what gives us the understanding of what faithfulness is. And it's amazing that we are hardwired to be looking for the most reliable thing. You know, everybody's existence just screams of trying to preserve yourself and find something to rest yeah. in and yeah. trust and hope in. I mean, every yeah. election shows that. Every coup shows that. Every war yeah. shows that. Everybody's trying to find something to rest their hope in. And we all die anyways. But yeah. the Lord, the Ancient of Days, no, not him. He's always been faithful. He's never, oh, bro, let me show you something. Let me okay. read you something. Joshua chapter 23. So Joshua gives his last, his final address to the people of Israel about why they should follow the Lord and why he's following the Lord and his whole household even. That's a pretty famous passage. But then he explains and he says, And behold, this day I'm going all the way, or going the way of all the earth, which is a reference to dying, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed in all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing has failed thereof. And it's like, wow. So he says, therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all the evil things until you, he has destroyed you from off his good land, which the Lord your God has given you. And that's exactly what happens. Mm. Even as Moses prophesied, they're not going to listen. They don't listen. And God, he keeps all his promises. So that's another thing of God's faithfulness we need to understand, uh, and we may want to explore at some point in time, is God's faithfulness to bring that wrath too. Yeah. To bring yeah. that discipline, to bring that mm-hmm. And so it's through not we're not going to experience wrath. But the world should be put on notice. But for God's children, he disciplines us. Also found in Hebrews is chapter uh, 12, I believe that he disciplines the children he loves. But when we consider 
evidence in this life that God's faithful and that he's going to be faithful to, for instance, uh, help us overcome death and that we'll be raised again in the glorious likeness of Jesus Christ. It will inherit all things. That's ooh, How can I have any confidence in that? It's because of how he yeah. delivers us in this life. So if we look at Romans 5, right? Remember that yeah. reasoning that scripture gives yeah. about why we should rejoice in our trials today. You know, he says here, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And so we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Not only so, but we also boast in tribulation, knowing that the tri tribulation produces patience. Patience produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. He's talking about how the experience of tribulation ultimately results in hope. As Joshua, we just read, told the people of Israel that God had not failed to cause one good thing that he promised to them to pass. And they best know he ain't going to fail to bring <laughs> the bad stuff if they would turn away from it. Okay, God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness. When we start walking with God and we start trusting him through trials, and then we see what he does on the other end of those trials. Like you said, brother, whether it be a few days, whether it be a few years, whether it be a whole generation even, man, it's worth it when we see it. he was faithful. Yeah, and that's the promise too, I think, to clarify is uh, mm. is that it's not always going to turn out the way that you wow, might have that you might have envisioned. That's important. But, you know, the very famous passage says uh, in Romans 8 that all things work together for yes. good, for, you know, to those who love God. Okay, great. So, we have kind of a distorted view of what's good, but mm. what is good? Mm -hmm. God is good. Yes. Things are going to work out to the glory of God. That passage might mean that you are going to die a martyr's death. Yes. Right? Yes. That passage might mean that we are going to see people in our lives die in their sin. Mm. There are things that are unpleasant and not according to if we were God, what we would do. But it's very important that we are not good mm -hmm. and that if we were God, God would cease to be good. Mm -hmm. So we can trust mm -hmm. in the faithfulness of a good God that when we are going through something and not seeing what the purpose is, but we remain faithful because we know that the promise is that good will happen mm -hmm. to those who love him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we continue to, to love God. Yes. And uh, and look forward yes. to seeing his faithfulness come to pass. Yes. But that doesn't mean that it's going to work out exactly yeah. as you are. But what I can, what I promise you, is that if you were, if you look back in a biblical mind mm. to what you have gone through, mm -hmm. what you are going through, mm -hmm. what someone else is going through, you will see God's faithfulness mm -hmm. in ways that you probably will not predict. Yes. It's both as uh, as terrifying as it is exciting, yes. as it is encouraging, as it is exhorting to to really be faithful according to the promise of a God who is faithful. Yes, the point is is that sometimes we don't know the promises and we have no idea what we're looking for. And knowing God is to know what He's promised me. To love God is to obey His commandments. And that's to show crazy mercy. And we have the example, God dying for the ungodly. It's like, whoa, okay, now I see. That's my focus. The joy is in suffering with Christ as I love others, as he loved me. And when we learn that, now we're living Shema. That's the whole point of this podcast, to remind people of the, the truth of God's word. Knowing him and walking with him, there's nothing like it. First Thessalonians 5. Verse 23 and 24 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. You know, there's a passage of scripture that tells us that 
in uh, Philippians chapter 2, I think it's verse 13, it says that we should work our salvation with fear and trembling. Fear but, and trembling, yes. Tell us, for it is God who works in you, both to will yes. and to work according to his good pleasure. And it's like, wow, that's just such good news. Because after he describes that famous passage of chapter 2 of the example of our Lord and the mind that he had, it's like, we that's in us? How? Okay, good. I'm glad he's the one who's going to do it. And that's really what Jesus was showing off is what happens when you t surrender yourself to the commandments of the Father, which are life, as Jesus said. And when the Spirit of God takes a hold of you, as we saw the Spirit descend on him, and wow, look at what Jesus did. And Jesus is marketing to us, hey, look at what I can accomplish when you surrender. And I think of what's promised in another place, First John chapter 3, right? It says, that beloved, now are we the sons or the children of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall, that we shall be like him, mm. for we shall see him as he is. Whoa! Like him. Yeah. So every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Why? And, and, and how am I purifying myself? Oh, scripture tells us, how can I, my young man, cleanse his way? By taking heed unto the word of the Lord. Okay, yeah. what does God tell me to do? Hey, I got it. Just trust me. Keep looking to me and then make sure when I deliver you, praise my name. God gets pretty aggressive about how much he wants to be our savior. Just read Psalm 50. It's kind of weird. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, what? If he wasn't God, it'd be kind of like inappropriate for him to say, but he is God. He rules and owns everything and this is how he wants it. And yeah. we're going to love it. He's just like, would you, if you just do it, would you love it? And so that's it right there, man. God's faithful. To cause us to walk in this, if we only surrender, yeah. that's it. That's the word. Yes. That's what we got to do. Surrender. Yeah, and and that confidence. I think if there's like one thing that um, I want people to walk away with is this is God's promise. God has promised to be faithful. We've mm -hmm. talked about what that actually means. What the end result is that that is a promise of God. Mm -hmm. That is a promise of the of the author and perfecter of your faith the author of your salvation, the creator of the universe. And uh, there's so there's so many mm. examples I'm not mm. going to get into mm. of people that I know who mm. are uh, constant, like their life is just a roller coaster, but it's all down, you know? And right now mm. they're, they're going through mm. things that it's like that this is tough and they're being faithful to God and nothing mm. is happening, mm. you know? So what's the point? This is the confidence that we want to give you. And we, we want you to have confidence, not because of what we say, but because of the promise of yes, God yes. is that he is going to be faithful, that you are going to be able to look back wow. even now wow. at the times that you are going through and yes. say, I see how God has been faithful. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's promise. It's yes. going to happen. Gonna we, happen. I promise. It's going to happen. I bet you a, a thousand bucks. You know, I bet you my whole March Madness bracket. Because <laughs> um, it's a perfect bracket, baby. Not busted yet. Um because the tournament hasn't started. But anyway, what I find uh, so encouraging about this whole conversation is that the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ himself, his ministry was full of moments where it wasn't working out, you know, where, where things were not going according to plan. Now, I put those in heavy, heavy quotes. Um, I think from a from a disciple's perspective, from a human perspective, we're seeing that in Mark 6, Jesus goes mm. and he's preaching to his hometown, the people who know him most, and they reject him. Mm. You're looking at that from a human perspective and you're going, wow, this is just not really working out in God's favor, you know, is it? Um, wow. And, uh, wow. it, you know, you see other things happen. He, one mm. of his closest friends mm. of his 12 betrays him. Mm -hmm. Uh, he goes to the cross. He dies. You know, mm -hmm. he, didn't he lose? Like, what, what, what is happening mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now? So we're, yeah, we, we are, Ooh, you know, there's so much more going on in the life of Jesus yeah. who who create, who create authored our faith. Mm -hmm. And things are not going. But we look back because we have these gospels. And we look back at the retrospect. And it is obvious and clear how God himself was being faithful through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ's mm -hmm. life. Because mm -hmm. Jesus is God, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that gives us even the more confidence to say, the more that I know God, the more that I love God and understand him, a person who had a life quite like ours in that things were not going well in a in a uh, in a worldly sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, and ended 
horribly. Horribly. And actually, yeah. the worst ending. There is no the worst. worst no the worst, worst ending. ending. Yes. And then we we look back and we see how God how that was all according to God's plan. And how God was faithful through that to bring something bigger and better and to glorify Him uh, in a way that we can now be a part of. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. Come on. Yeah. That's that gives that should give full confidence and even more reason to to love God and know him and then and love others as a, as a result. The more that we love him, the more confidence that we can have in his faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Um that uh that is a song. So <laughs> maybe what I'll title the podcast, I'm not really sure, but that yeah. was good. That excellent word. Excellent word. Hallelujah. Living Shema is produced by Benjamin Foote and Carl Wellborn Jr. Our intro and outro music was produced by Jason Vaughn. If you have a question, comment, or quip, please contact us via email at official at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time.